Hi, today we're going to take a look at an 85mm macro lens with a twist. This is the Asta Uri 85mm f2.8 macro tilt lens. So, let's see what it's all about. If this is the first time that you're hearing the name Asta Uri, it's hard to blame you. The Shenzhen based manufacturer was founded in early 2018, but since then it already accumulated an impressive line of 15 manual focus lenses and if some recent leaks online are to be trusted, there are several more coming in the near future, including an autofocus lens. Let's start with the optical design. The lens has 11 elements in 8 groups, including 2 extra low depression elements. Moving over to material, the lens is made from metal and feels quite substantial in the hand. In terms of size and weight, the lens measures around 12 cm long and the weight seems to confirm our feeling, tipping the scale at just over 730 grams. The lens has an average wide focus ring and a slightly narrower aperture ring in the front. Both rings do not provide enough texture for gripping in our opinion and the aperture ring is slightly thicker for some reason, making it the first thing that you grab instead of the focus ring in lots of cases. One other strange design choice is the clickless aperture ring. This lens is not primarily designed for video shooting and we see no reason why the aperture lacks this functionality, especially since this is a fully manual lens with no camera indication for aperture. The focus ring has its own quirks which we shall discuss in a moment. The lens has three tiny knobs that have to do with the tilt mechanism which we shall discuss later on in this review. Other than that, there are no buttons or switches of any kind on this lens. When it comes to sealing, the lens does not seem to have any weather sealing. The lens comes in various mounts including Canon RF, Fujifilm X, L-mount, Nikon Z and in our case, Sony E-mount. Our lens sample did not come with a hood. The lens does have a 12 blade aperture diaphragm. We will see later on in this review how this affects the bokeh. Finally, the lens has a 55mm front filter thread. Now let's move over to performance and we will start with focusing. This is a fully manual focus lens and there is no communication between the lens and the camera. There is also no EXIF information recorded on the camera from the lens. The focus ring on this lens is unbelievably delicate, probably more than any other lens that we have tested, which can be a challenge to use, especially when shooting close up. It has hard stops and a focus throw of around 100 degrees or so. Now let's discuss the tilt functionality of this lens. On the rear of the lens there are three small metal knobs which are not exactly easy to turn due to their size and texture. To be fair, small and comfortable knobs close to the camera is a design limitation of all the tilt shift lenses that we have ever used, but on this lens they feel extra hard to work with. On the right you have a tilt lock knob and on the left you have a knob for changing the tilt angle from minus 8 degrees to plus 8 degrees. Mind you, this is a little less tilt than most other telephoto tilt shift lenses on the market. You can leave the tilt locking knob open and the lens will not change the tilt and you can change the tilt with your hands as well, which is what we often do. The third knob, which is super tiny and very close to the camera, hence very difficult to operate, allows for a 360 degree turn of the lens with soft clicks every 30 degrees. Before we demonstrate what an 8 degree tilt can provide, there is one drawback of this lens that needs to be addressed. While this is a full frame lens, it does not function as a full frame tilt lens. This means that if you tilt the lens in full frame mode, you will see very clear dark edges to the frame. We also tested the lens darkening in APS-C mode and we will get to that in a moment. Granted, this limitation is clearly stated in the marketing material and this lens is sold as an APS-C tilt lens and you should treat it as such. We would certainly like to see a full frame tilt version of this lens in the future, but this will probably come at an added cost and extra size and weight. Now you can see some examples that we shot in the studio with and without the 8 degree tilt functionality. Moving away from the tilt, this lens, as you would expect, has no image stabilization. When it comes to sharpness, we tested the sharpness of the lens using our special large professional Imatest high-end chart on our Sony A1. 
In the center of the frame, the image is pretty sharp, even wide open, but with a lot of purple fringing, getting significantly cleaner only between f5.6 and f8. In the corners, image quality is in great wide open and is only sharp at around f8. The lens has a full macro capability with 1 to 1 magnification at a minimum official close up distance of 25 cm, covering a full frame sensor, and this seems to hold true in our testing. We also tested the close-up sharpness of the lens, and as you can see in our results, sharpness is good even wide open in the center and improves around f5.6, although with lots of purple fringing, which we shall address in a moment. In the corners, you will see a much bigger improvement around f5.6 and even more so at f8. Just like most other macro lenses, the SF really displays a great deal of breathing in our tests. As we have already discussed, on our test, it seems that the lens has a very visible longitudinal chromatic aberrations at least until f4, which seems to clear up around f5.6. On the upside, the lens seems to have a surprisingly low level of flare with small amount of green and blue when faced with a strong direct light source. We tested the corner darkening of the lens in full frame mode without any tilting and you can see quite a bit of darkening wide open which improves between f4 and f5.6 but does not clear up even at f8. When it comes to edge darkening in tilt mode, as we have noted before, full frame shots are basically unusable but even on APS-C there is very significant darkening on the edge of the frame. There is certainly a reason why quality full-frame tilt-shift lenses are so expensive. Looking at the image in full-frame mode, the lens seems to have a minuscule amount of pincushion distortion. Looking at the bokeh balls of this lens, you see that there are no onion rings, but the balls are also not particularly round even close to the center of the frame. So let's conclude. The Asta Huri 85mm f2.8 macro tilt lens is certainly an interesting product which doesn't have a lot of competition in the category. The lens does have many limitations. These start with a very cumbersome tilt controlling knobs, huge amount of chromatic aberrations, and less than taller image quality in the corners. Its lack of full frame tilt support is also not something that we like and the high degree of darkening in the edge, even in APS-C mode when fully tilting, is not helping. While it may seem that we have a lot of criticism about the design of this lens and its performance, and we do, it is important to put things in perspective as this is a new manufacturer and a lens which is quite affordable. If anything, testing this lens makes us want to see what Astahuri will design next and how its lenses will evolve over time. Finally, when it comes to pricing, the lens currently sells for just under $330. So, this is everything that we have for you on the Astahuri 85mm 2.8 macro tilt lens. You can check out the full review with all of our test results. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are a lot more videos coming up very soon. See you next time.